one group of polygamists isn't enough for you, today we have two. Yes, the Dargers join us for this episode. This is Sister Wives. This is a rewatch, season five, episode five, more Sister Wives. And we're moving into the seasons that had the longer episodes. I can't remember if this is a season that used to be two hours and is now one hour, or if, um, if it was one hour back then, because that was a bajillion years ago. So what can we say about this new family? Better looking and balder. <laughs> um, so yeah, so remember, jo it's Joe Darger, and this is the one where he met... He married Alina and Vicky, who I, I did, they didn't say this in the episode, but... Someone, they're cousins. They're cousins. They didn't say that in the episode, did they? I don't think so. But I Googled it, they're cousins. And then and he married one of their twin sister. You're just so all Mr. Hyper. Anything else you want to share? Go for it. I want this to be over. No, so Alina and Vicky, he married them on the same day, which is extremely unusual. And, and super romantic for each of them. <laughs> and it kind of sounded like... No one really approved. They were like, <clears throat> one of them, I think it was Vicky, <clears throat> they all look the same to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know who was who. So if they didn't put a number, what's interesting is they call Alina the first wife and Vicky the second wife, but they were married the same day. So that, well, maybe he married one in the morning, consummated, and married one in the night, consummated, and then... I mean, it does feel who like knows? they went out of their... Seems gross. It seems, it seems odd to marry them on the same day and then to designate one as the, the first... first. And, and not be like, technically, I don't have a first wife because I married him on the same date. Like, that's where I thought he was going. And then they're like, here's my first wife. That's the second wife. And I was like, okay, okay then. Yeah, so they're cousins. They married on the same day, as near as I can tell. Uh, it sounds like no one really approved. So I think it was Vicky's father said i'll give you my permission but not my approval but not my blessing not my blessing and she's like okay whatever i don't care and he said he just dropped down right there and proposed to her um and then vicky has a twin sister named val who married into a different polygamous family and after 10 years got divorced and left with her five kids and then joined their family so, I don't know. And this is the family that I think I heard that one of the sons did a podcast, which I haven't heard, but the big explosive news from that podcast, do you want to hear what it was? Do I have to say yes? Well, is that he would, is that, I think this is the family, where they said that he would have loud sex with one wife to punish the other when he was unhappy with them. So he would like, if he was mad at Vicky, he'd go and have loud boisterous sex with Val to punish him or something. Wow, sounds but there's, incredibly healthy. But as near as I can tell, they're still they're still married. There's still a couple. I, I had thought they broke up, but I guess this was not the one that broke up. Um, they've been friends with the Browns for four years. The Browns were like, we've been friends forever. And then the Dargers were like, four years? What's, it felt a little passive aggressive. The, the season, the episode though starts with everybody talking about the extra bedroom. I guess the house, it sounds like the house comes with five bedrooms. And one of the options is to have a six bedroom put on, which would have, so, so, uh, it gets a little confusing because they talk about how many kids bedrooms there are. It gets a little confusing because we don't care. So Christine wants the extra bedroom so that she'll have six total, her own plus five. And mo that means most of the kids would have their own bedroom. Janelle does not want the extra bedroom. She says, I'm fine. With three. With, which would be, which doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't care. I don't think you heard that right. Uh, I think I did. Which would not be three bedrooms total. It would be her bedroom plus three, so that's four. So the fifth bedroom. I get a little confusing because it's, like I said, and then Robin says that she wants to have the pantry in the hobby room, which she will turn into a, um, an and the extra bedroom, for Cody. which will be an office for Robin, she says. Uh huh. And then Mary just says she wants the wet bar. Do you think the office for Cody was a sex dungeon? Which, um, and then he, which makes it, but, but anyway, and then she wants the extra, she just wants the wet bar, and then she suggests maybe a tennis court out back for her child, which I thought maybe she was being serious, but she had to be joking, because that's not big enough for a tennis court, none right. of those properties would be, I mean, they could get rid of a house and put in a tennis court with very little space around it, but, um... And so that's kind of all we saw with that. And then they're going to go on vacation with the Dargers to, I kind of felt like, I don't know why they drove all the way to Oceanside from Vegas to, I mean, it certainly wasn't that interesting. 
It wasn't like they did anything at the beach that they couldn't have just done, like, um, in Vegas. So I'm not sure. They seem to go to California quite a bit, and I don't quite get why. Maybe they did something on their own, like Disneyland or, or something else. But they're going to go... They're going to go to Oceanside. Oceanside. Um, they are uh, specifically described as not being of uh, their faith. They are independent fundamentalists. So, I mean, that's interesting. Because to me, it sounds like they're very similar. But they said that they're not of their faith tradition. Okay. So, right off the bat, I, a lot of people... The wives seem to really like Joe Darter. I, he sends up a lot of... For me, it's not would not be a good match. Like, he definitely seems a little bossy pushy i don't know i don't i don't see the appeal but the women a lot of them are like oh especially mary's like oh i could do with a man who who actually took charge and all that and i do think a lot of people kind of trace back cody's desire to do patriarchy and to be in charge and make all these decisions back to how he sort of bat his eyes at joe and how all the women were like oh he's so good and there was something there was a lot of stuff that i wasn't quite I guess paying enough attention to. We have a headache. We think we got so caught something from our son. We both kind of feel a little lousy. So it might not have been our best recap because there was a whole thing about Joe, they were gonna leave at 10 and he's like, well, don't tell me eight if we're not gonna leave until 10. And then they, they complain about it. Seems like a lovely guy who's just in, on, in, well, what who's is just you, in it for the ride. What did you think of him? He's a tool. Okay. I was, well, he gave me this look like obviously I knew, and I wouldn't have asked if I didn't know, and I don't know. Um, and so they show the next morning them trying to get ready, and to me the biggest issue is just that Cody's everywhere. He's in the house, he's out of the house, he's like, where are people? We should do this. Well, never mind. What? This? Uh, 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 uh. And he seems very confused the whole time and seems to be contradicting himself. And so I kind of feel like it's not even a matter of Joe being more organized and assertive and everything so much as he doesn't flim flam everywhere and he always Cody always loves he loves that big performance of I'm so overwhelmed oh there's so much I have to do oh like Kermit flail like he enjoys that aspect of he has so much to do he's so overwhelmed and so you're just like, okay, well, maybe if you just had sat down and talked about it and, like, done stuff, like, okay, everything's going here. Because then he's like, well, we got to redistribute weight. And it's like, well, why don't you decide that, you know, like, okay, we're going to put all the food into things and then we're all going to take each family, each car is going to take two. Here's who's going to ride there. Okay, you know, I don't know if you necessarily even need to decide it ahead of time so much as you need to decide it. Period. It needs to be decided. Decided. So... They all go to, to California. They all go play on the beach. Uh, there's a reference to like maybe one, some of the, one of the brown girls think maybe one of the darker boys is cute. That's, there doesn't, doesn't flesh out to anything. You see a lot of people booty, burg, bo, bo, Words is hard. Boogie boarding? Boogie boarding? Why can't I think of how you say it? Boogie boarding? Booger boarding? Booger boarding. I mean, I sound like someone who's never been to the beach before and I grew up in California. Boogie boarding. It makes me anxious uh, because they each have, each family has like five kids. And the thing is, is each, like. Oh, yeah. Well, each. Each. Woman's. Family. Each household or whatever. Except for Mary. Uh, has like five kids. And so that stresses me out because there's that, that rule that if everybody's watching your kids, no Nobody one's watching is. your kids. And so like when we go to the local pool with our son, there's two of us and they have two full-time lifeguards and they're very good. Very, very good. And we keep our eyes pressed on, you know, just like right on our kid the whole time. And yes, we might be a little bit hovering, but we got the one kid. We got to keep an eye on him. <laughs> I'm sorry. We don't have any spares. We don't have. And of course, there is some reference in the rest of this episode to child loss. Nothing too graphic. I just have to warn you it's coming up. So if that's sort of a thing that's not for you, you might just want to skip the rest of this episode. Um, but I was going to say, I know someone who lost a child to a drowning at a hotel and so it's and I used to have nightmares when our son was little we lived by a river 
And I used to have nightmares all the time about... <laughs> it was in our backyard, literally. Like, like 50 yards? 25 yards? And a pretty good river. I mean, it wasn't 10 like... 10 yards a, or less. Yeah, I mean... Sometimes the front yard was the river. Yeah, I mean, during a couple, every 10 or 20 years 30, or so... Like a 30-year cycle? You, you get, like, a really bad flood, and then the whole... Y'all, everything for acres would be under the river. Um, but yeah, I used to have, so I, I'm always a little, I've always been a little weird about water. Like I'm not scared. I mean, I can swim and everything, but I just, whew, I used to have dreams about him getting pulled underneath that, that, um, that you would, I had this dream, this reoccurring dream when I was pregnant because I used to go with him in winter and feed. And part of the job of feeding is that you would take an ax and you would cut a hole in the river so that the animals, the horses and the cows would have fresh water every day. And it wasn't terribly dangerous. Well, it depends how dumb you were. Well, we did have someone fall in, but it was like, I mean, it wasn't like she was nearly swept away, but we like- She, she was dumb as hell. She was standing on the piece of ice she was cutting and guess what? It broke she cut and it. she dunked and everything and we <laughs> took her back to the house and everything. But uh, I used to have dreams when I was pregnant because he would go out alone that he was like, there was some freak accident and he got pulled underneath the ice. And then I had dreams about my baby dog that I loved, then later on my son. So, yeah, I mean, maybe I should talk to my therapist about You're some of that. You're not high strung or nothing? I'm not high strung at all. Uh, anyway, they're at the beach, they're doing all that, and then they, the parents are all talking, and uh, they're talking about their fear of the government breaking up their family, and there's a specific reference to one of them, I think it might have been Vicky, might have been Val, it was one, of Alina. one of the women that's married to Joe Duggar, Darger is saying that they, um, this is the part where I was, you know, the, they had a five-month-old who had a heart defect and some other problems and passed away peacefully at home. And the state investigated, and the, the, the state investigated, and then some of the questions, well, she thought they were weird, but a part of me goes, I kind of get why the state was asking questions like, Who's your doctor? Where'd you have the baby? Where do you, do you, what kind of medicine are you medicine? Because it kind of sounded like what they were asking is, did you get this baby any help is kind of what it sounded like. They weren't real clear on that, but she said that she felt like that was really scary. Of course, just the thought of losing a five month old just makes me just, oh, I just can't imagine how terrible it is. And then, and this whole thing, Robin's talking about how we don't want people to believe the stereotypes about us. I'm like, oh, the stereotype where the man takes financial advantage of his of his wives, <laughs> and that when he abandons them, they have no legal or um, faith tradition repercussions to protect themselves. Yeah, Robin, wouldn't that be terrible if people thought that about the Brown family? Um, the only reason why Mary, Christine, and Janelle can leave, and it's, it's not the most devastating story you've ever heard, is because they have enough fame from sister wives to have each of them have started making a lot of money from MLMs. And I don't recommend ML... ML Words is hard. Multi... Those companies. <laughs> but... You just gave up. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> but the idea is at least they had something to fall back on. If they did not have a TV show, they would be destitute. They would have literally nothing. Um, and... Uh, they would be probably all in foreclosure for everything because the only reason they could afford even rental was because of the stupid TV show. Um, and then there was a little discussion about group affection. This is all stuff that I'm just like, I'm dying because they the Dargers explain how they don't mind group affection, like not group affection, but like affection when they're in a group. Like between Joe like and each wife. That's not what they said. <laughs> like hugging or kissing in front of stuff. Because like, well, you shouldn't have to wait three days to get a hug. And then there's a little bit more discussion a bunch of the Browns. And Robin is very vocal about how it should be that it's okay. Because it just, when you see Cody being happy with another wife, you should feel affirmed in your marriage. And I thought, yeah, lady, because you're the only one necking up on him all the time. But then the other wives are a little bit more like, I just think it's more respectful and blah, 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 blah. Um, and then there's some reference about how it would be nice if maybe it would be okay with the moms if some of the teenagers dated some of the darker teenagers. Like if that happens, that's okay. But it's not really, um, not really a big deal. And then they discuss the kitchen issue. And... Joe's pretty, I mean, you know, he's pretty forceful with his wives, but he's pretty forceful with Cody. And, you know, Cody, 
kind of sticks up for his family. I'm not going to say he was some, like, bastion of, like, hey, man, that's inappropriate. It's not your place to say All anything. All I heard was my so, some of my wives think sharing a kitchen is abusive. abusive. Yeah, so what he says is the Durgers are like, well, we just, you need to be in the same house. You guys are getting four separate houses. And then Cody says the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm kidding. One of the hundred dumbest things I've ever heard from Cody Brown should be its own category, which is he says, well, when we moved to Vegas, I figured that we'd be able to find some rich person's foreclosure home, something like 10 to 15,000 square feet with four kitchens. Now, I am not an expert on rich people homes, but I have been in a lot of them. And um, we've been in a house, we've been in a glorious mansion. It had, well, like, it was like, 12,000 square feet, it had, instead of Barbara. Okay. 12, wasn't it about 12,000 square feet? I have no clue. I think it was about 12,000 square feet. It had, it was a, it was a 1920s-ish hacienda originally. The original tiles on the house were from the, were from the original Santa Barbara mission. And when they redid their roof, they bought these original tiles and put them on the roof. that was on the short list when that president bought... Oh, Camp David. they said that Ronald Reagan was trying to decide between this property and the property that he eventually bought, bought is the legend of what we heard. Um, it was built around the time of the Lindbergh baby. So all around the house is this huge, like 12 foot wall with these big spikes, like three feet tall. They were sort of shaped like that with like a hook at the end. And they were all hand forged on a blacksmith on this property it had a four and any any part of that wall that was smooth had glass embedded like in it glass put up through it um all of the all of the um the master bedroom had these gigantic like bolts that went straight into the wall the whole building was concrete like two feet of solid cement all the way around so it was like really cool in summer Mobile reception was awesome it's, <laughs> no it was terrible all of the windows had like had um had what do you call that i just said it wrought iron, but oh. it was all like hand forged and it was like twisted. It was beautiful. The The little girl's bedroom had hearts in the wrought iron, like so it would go down and then go out. It was gorgeous. It had a four carriage garage, not like um, not like Mary's carriage garage, like actual carriages and all of <laughs> yeah. that. And then like a four car garage, but then like a five carriage garage. And, it was, a, secret, it was, okay. and a secret room. Okay, sorry. So we got off track. This is a house that I used to vacation at. And um, that house had two kitchens. It had one enormous kitchen with like a, 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 a butler's pantry and like a back room where you would do like the serving and all of the serverware would be. Gorgeous, huge kitchen. And then one of the wings of the house, because it, it was like a hacienda style like this and all the bedrooms went out into the middle where there's a big courtyard and a huge fountain had like a small kitchen off off of it i've never been i've and then we used to go to steamboat with a real estate agent who would take us to like all the really fancy houses and a lot of them would have like a second kitchen i've never seen one with four that's my point never seen a house with four or kitchens three. um i've never seen one with three now maybe things like the playboy mansion might have several extra kitchens but you know where that is not in, not in Vegas. Vegas. But, okay, so we got way, way derailed. I was talking about this. I missed that house. In fact, I just had a dream about that house not too long ago in Santa Barbara. It was up in Goleta. Um, anyway. Anyway. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. In case anyone's from Santa Barbara, I thought I would just point that out. Um, beautiful, beautiful house. And uh, But I, the idea that he thought there'd be places with four. And then the thing is, is even if you did find one, like if somebody goes, yeah, I know someone had four kitchens, were they four equal kitchens? No, I almost guarantee you that what you might get is some variation on a catering kitchen and then a home kitchen and then a smaller kitchen and a smaller kitchen. Or you would get one big kitchen and like something with like um, the house I grew up in had like a mini downstairs was like a sink and a tiny little refrigerator. Like an in-laws kitchen. Yeah, like a mother-in-law's unit or something. But it would not be. So first of all, okay, I'm sorry. That was so boring. I'm so sorry. I hope you're watching this at two times speed. Um, and so then we go through the whole, like, well, I'm not going to have my wife share a kitchen because there's two. Um, we, we learn where Robin gets the cry, you know, it's all about yeah. me when I've offended somebody else. So Cody says, I have two wives who consider it abusive. Then we cut to Mary crying, saying, I get, my feelings get so hurt when Cody says that, says that because I know that Janelle thinks I was abusive to her in the kitchen. And they, like, cut to Janelle and she's just like this.
And like, and she almost moves like she's going to say something. And then Mary keeps crying and says, you know, that wasn't my intention. I wasn't being trying to be abusive. I just thought it made sense to put the cups here. And at some point in all of this rambling, Janelle does say, you know, it's just, it was different personalities. Like, very gracious. But I'm going to tell you, Janelle did not fall over herself to say, no, it wasn't abusive. But I think Mary specifically used that language to try to force Janelle to disagree. Yep. That's what I think. And then eventually, Janelle just doesn't really respond. Mary does kind of apologize. That was the highlight of the episode. Mary does kind of apologize. She does kind of say, well, you know, that wasn't my... Well, she's like, well, this wasn't my intention. I just... I didn't mean to be abusive. And then, you know, that kind of thing. And then the last thing, and I guess we have the Dargers to blame for this. The, because the mission statement. The Dargers bring up that they have a mission statement. And Janelle is all for it. No. Robin is all for it. That's great. We should do that. We should write that up. We should put it in all our houses. Mary's into it. Christine's in it. And Janelle's like, I mean, I don't really get it. But if you guys are all into it, sure, I'll do it. And then what well, my memory of it is, and if I will have plenty of time to refresh my memory, because I'm pretty sure this takes about two, three seasons, nine seasons of the mission statement. It's so funny because I thought the mission statement took a long time. Like, the house building took a long time, but that makes sense to me. Mary's cheating took a long time. Well, COVID no, no, no. took a long time. I thought the, the, so the house building seemed about normal because I know how long it takes to build houses. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm not an expert. I'm just aware of the fact they don't go up on a weekend. It's going to take a while. But then they did a mission statement and it took forever. And I was like, wow, they can't drag anything out as long as that. And then sure enough, a few seasons later, it was... <laughs> Mary's catfishing. And then I was like, okay, nothing can be dragged out as much as the catfishing. Then they moved to Flagstaff, and the getting the family back together was season after season after season of no progress. And then we had COVID, which I feel like we might finally be done talking about. We're still going to hear about Gabe and Garrison and how they've wronged Cody. But it seems like it seems like we've finally gotten past the place out of, you know, 17, we were still deep in it with Cody nearly dying from COVID. Um, and I don't mean to be flippant because people did die from COVID. But I he didn't almost. But he didn't almost die. Neither did Robin. They didn't have to even put on oxygen. I'm sure they were miserable. But somehow... Nothing's changed the, since then. <laughs> the fact that they were miserable was somehow... <clears throat> Gabe and Garrison's fault, even though Gabe and Garrison did not get them sick. So that was weird to me. But, um, yeah, so then the Dargers bring up this mission statement, and I guess that's going to be... My memory is that they... See, to me, the mission statement should have been, like, a week or two. So, like, maybe an episode and a half of writing. And then a week or two of, of getting it printed up and then and planning the party and then doing it. Like, it's, this should have taken a month. And if I remember, it takes... Forever. My memory is that uh, Robin makes it all about her, but Christine does all the actual work, which feels very, very on par. Um, I'm sorry. I feel like we did not do a very good, and I had a whole rambling thing about that house in Santa Barbara. Sorry. Um, for no good reason. I felt very passionate about we the story. We should have talked about the sex dungeon we had in one of our houses. Oh, uh, well, we'll give you that bonus story, which is when we lived up north, after John's mother had a house that we had bought. Um, and when we moved, obviously, we had to sell it. And so we couldn't sell it initially, which isn't surprising. It was in the middle of nowhere. And so someone local wanted to rent it, wanted to buy it, but couldn't afford it yet. So was going to rent it till he could buy it. And so he... Uh, so that happened. And then he realized he couldn't, he didn't want it. And so we sent a realtor and he wouldn't let her in. <laughs> so I called and him so, up. I was like, what the heck? And he's like, oh, sorry. And I was like, no, like... She has to come in and see the house. She wants so we're she can sell it. We're selling this house. They have to come in. You have to give them access. And he's like, "Well, I just need warning. I just need a little bit of time." And I was like, "Okay. Well, exactly. How much time do you need? Are you okay? Is there a meth lab in my house?" And he said, "No. <laughs> Not a meth lab. Not a meth lab. A sex dungeon." I don't. You know, to this day, I don't know which bedroom it was. I do. Wait, was it the downstairs one? Nope. Upstairs, the long skinny one. Yep. Okay. Okay, I was like, because none of them seemed very... And then he told me, and I was like, okay, that's great. Well, you can either take it down or whatever, but, I mean, 
they got to get in there and they're going to take pictures. So, you know, <laughs> figure it out. Did you tell the real estate agent? Because she was mad that he had a dog in there. And we were like, well, he's got a whole lot more <laughs> than that. So, anyway. Okay, little bonus story. Sorry, this is not our best work. We're it's our to be... best work. Deal with it. <laughs> There's only so much we can do. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. Bye.